Psychological research into attachment points to the importance of the relationship between the baby and their caregiver in the first years of life, and often this caregiver is the mother. But this has raised questions for psychologists. Where does this leave fathers? I am the father. Are they just left to play a supporting role? What is the role of the father in attachment? Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. Previously, we have explored the stages of attachment through the research of Schaefer and Emerson, and we saw in that video that infants tend to form an attachment with the mother first, and then form attachments with others later, with the father usually being the next in line. According to their final stage in the development of attachments, called multiple attachments, attachments form from around the age of 10 months. At around 18 months, 75% of the infants had formed an attachment with their father. We're going to have a look at some of the psychological research that has explored what the role of the father in attachment is and the extent to which it differs from the mother. Some researchers argue that fathers are simply not equipped to form an attachment with an infant like a mother can. Firstly, there are the norms and expectations in society for the roles of men and women. Stereotypes in some societies and cultures can affect the role of the father because the characteristics of being sensitive and caring caring are often portrayed as typically feminine. Additionally, until very recently, men were not given any paternity leave from work when their baby was born, which put the responsibility to care for the child onto the mother. As a result, the caregiver role has not been seen as masculine, which potentially discourages fathers from forming a close attachment. Secondly, there are biological factors. This is because there are differences in the levels of certain hormones. For example, while men have higher levels of testosterone, women have higher levels of estrogen in their bodies. Estrogen is thought to be involved in caring behaviours in women, and so the suggestion is that men may struggle to take on the caregiver role because they are Lower levels of estrogen make it harder for them to show caring behaviours. Another hormone thought to be involved is oxytocin. Research suggests oxytocin reduces the stress hormone cortisol and is thought to lower the fight or flight response and promote a tend and befriend response instead, which is about seeking out others for help as well as protecting those in your care. Oxytocin helps with the formation of relationships. For example, during and immediately after birth, women produce high levels of oxytocin. It helps the mother bond with her child straight away, and when mothers breastfeed, oxytocin levels rise to strengthen the connection with their child too. This biological difference in oxytocin between men and women has further strengthened the view that men are not equipped to play the caregiver role. So if fathers are not equipped for the role of the caregiver, what is their role? Some researchers point to the role of the father as a playmate rather than a caregiver. For example, Geiger in 1996 found that in their observations, the play interactions of the father with their infant were more exciting and focused on fun and playing in comparison to the mothers, whose interactions were typically more affectionate caring and nurturing. And I have to say, some of that seems true. For example, bath time with my two-year-old is a whole different story depending on whether it's me or my wife who's in charge. If it's me, it's extra bubbles, water all over the place and every toy we've got. Whereas if it's my wife, he actually gets a wash. So there it is. Fathers are the playmate, mothers the caregiver. But is this the whole picture? Other research by Tiffany Field in 1978 filmed the interactions between four-month-old babies and their caregivers. There were 36 infants in total, divided into three groups of 12. 12 infants were observed interacting with their primary caregiver mothers. 12 infants were observed interacting with their primary caregiver fathers. And 12 infants were observed interacting with their secondary caregiver fathers. They found that, just like previous research, in in general, fathers engaged in significantly more game playing and less holding of their infants. However, primary caregiver fathers and mothers engaged in significantly more smiling, imitative facial expressions and high-pitched imitative vocalisations than did secondary caregiver fathers. This research suggests that being a primary caregiver is not about whether you're a male or a female, whether you're the father or the mother. 
It's about the quality of the relationship that they have with their child in terms of the way they interact. In fact, we can now come all the way back to where we started with the discussion around biology. Recent studies are revealing that fathers can actually be biologically equipped to be nurturing and caring. Research by Gordon et al. in 2010 studied 80 couples in the first month after they had their firstborn child. They measured the levels of oxytocin in both fathers and mothers after they had played with their child for 10 minutes. And they did this again six months later. They found that the father's oxytocin levels matched the mothers, suggesting that if fathers do have an engaged parental role, they can have the biological process that encourages caring and nurturing behaviour. Finally, in our discussion on the role of the father and attachment, it's worth coming back to a point we discussed about Schaefer and Emerson's research and the stages of attachment, and that is the issue of culture. According to Schaefer and many other researchers, a child will have a primary caregiver first, typically the mother, and then go on to develop multiple attachments from around the age of 10 months onwards, with the father usually next. However, the majority of research in infant development and parenting comes from so-called weird cultures. Weird standing for Western, educated, industrialised, rich and democratic. But different cultures share the responsibilities of parenting in different ways. And some researchers found that in some cultures, multiple caregivers are the norm, which leads to multiple attachments not being the last stage once the child is around 10 months, but rather right from the beginning. This means that the question about the role of the father is not as straightforward as first thought and can be influenced by the culture in which the question is being asked. So now we've explored the role of the father, but before we move on to exploring the two main explanations for how attachments form, we need to consider the significant and at points highly controversial way that psychologists have studied animals to learn about attachment. To check that out, you can click the video on the screen now. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.